Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving holidays here in the States and I hope uh, the rest of you out there throughout the world had a great week last week. Now I'm very excited to bring you this paint review because I don't do many paint reviews. I don't do a lot of reviews, period. I don't do a lot of swatching. There are other channels that do that very, very well. I'm not one of them. But I've got a treat, I think, for you today. It was something that I ran across. And the more I learned about it, the more excited I got, the more I thought there are stories here that I have to tell. I just love great background stories. But I don't do a lot of paint reviews because there's so many out there of, of all the big worldwide brands that we have access to. And there are scads of reviews out there. Scads of artists that you can talk to, of blogs galore with swatches. I mean, for the most part, the well-known brands out there, you can find plenty of information on. All that to say, I've got this paint review for you today and I'm really excited about it because it has a great story. It's, it's newish on the scene in the US. It's a great value and it's something you might wanna look into if you're looking for a paint. It's Renaissance. Renaissance is a Polish paint company. They produce a high quality artist grade paint. Now this is where the story comes in and I was kind of surprised. I first saw a review on Lindsay Wyrick's channel, uh, The Frugal Crafter. Go over to her channel and check that out if you want to. She did a good review on that. And I guess when I first saw these paints, I thought it was another Me Too brand or a cheap knockoff. These are not. These are high quality, first quality, artist grade paints. So that's number one. They are completely, almost, almost completely handmade. And that sort of raised my eyebrows. It's like, you know how you kind of sit up and start to pay attention when you start hearing more and more. It's a family owned business. That was number three. It's like, hmm, okay. Turns out the owner, who is Italian, met his wife in Italy, who is Polish, learned from a company that he worked for how to make paints, a uh, very traditional manner, learned his craft there, went back to Poland with his wife, started a company there that imported the paints that he learned his craft under. That company eventually went out of business the owner then started his own company making his own paints, and that is Renaissance. Neat little story. Been knowing it for about 20 years now. Part two of the story, if you watch Lindsay Wyrick's channel, The Frugal Crafter, you may have seen a stream with a lady by the name of April Mathis. Now, April uh, is a painter. She also calls herself a paint collector, which I think is kind of neat. She is very familiar with paint. She's tried all sorts of different pigments from just about all the major brands. She was traveling in Poland and happened to go into an art store and buy a souvenir pan set, I guess, of Renaissance paints. As she started working with these paints, she realized that these were something special. Uh, I think she came back a year later was so impressed with the paints that she wanted to become a U.S. distributor. Now, this is the other part of doing reviews for things that I absolutely love, is getting involved with people who are not big companies, but they have singular visions. If you've seen some of my other reviews uh, for things like that, you know how much I love that. The perfect sketchbook, the portable painter, the etcher satchel, the cloverleaf palette. I haven't done a review on that one, but I will. I mean, people who had ideas, did all the work of bringing them to market and just really wowing and delighting people with the things that they've done. They see a gap in the market. Well, this is another one. Renaissance is not sold in the US. April saw a chance to do that and bring those products to us. So she approached the owners. They agreed to let her be the US distributor. April now has an Etsy store. Uh, where she sells these paints exclusively. Right now, it's the only place in the U.S. you'll get them. And it's funny because about the time I was watching Lindsay's review and then I watched the stream on Lindsay's channel, she contacted me. And wow, I thought, what great timing. My interest was just starting to be piqued about these paints. She wanted to send me some to try. She did. I started trying and playing with them. Very impressed with them, first impressions. I ended up ordering some more. She sent me some tubes. Uh, I ended up ordering some pans. I'm probably gonna order more. And the rest is kind of history. So if you're interested in these paints, I hope you'll also go over to April's channel. I will put that link below. She has two streams where she swatches out the entire line. Go check out her Etsy store. That link will also be below. 
She's got descriptions and swatch charts there, which you can uh, zoom up on and see close up with all the pigment information. I'll also put the Renaissance website where you can get all the pigment info. And speaking of which, let's talk about Renaissance and the paints a little bit more. Uh, I think they started out making oils and quickly got into half pans. I don't know where that came in in their history. But their beginning with watercolor was uh, the little half pans. And it is a honey-based formula. So it's another reason why I'm very excited about them. Um, one of the things I absolutely love about M. Graham and Sennelier and even Mission Gold is the honey formulation. It just allows you really quick, extremely vibrant pigment loads on the first wet, even just a damp brush usually will bring color off. It's based on a historical for formula that's centuries old. For their half pans, uh, they have a 54 color range. Use high quality artist pigments, acacia honey. As I've mentioned, the entire process, almost the entire process is done by hand. They use select inorganic and organic pigments like most high quality paint makers. Part of that includes uh, genuine Polish cobalt and cadmiums. And all of their colors offer top quality artist light fastness now the tubes are newer it's a newer range just offered this year they reformulated them a little bit and you'll see the difference in the pans to the tubes there's more honey they added a little more honey anyway as i mentioned before all the pigment info is listed on their website there's a 70 color range to the tubes 50 of those are single pigment colors and again, if you're not at all familiar with honey or honey-based paints, just aids in the preservation, things like mold, uh, a little bit more even flow, allows for heavier pigment loads, maintaining truer color vibrancy and luminosity. But a sort of a final punctuation on April Mathis's vision was the value she was bringing to us in the U.S. These paints are inexpensive. I mean, seriously, inexpensive. But they're not cheap. It is not a cheap paint. At the time of publishing this video, the pans from Maple Store will run you about $3.50. The tubes, which are 15 milliliter tubes, that's the bigger tube, go from $6.50 to $8.25 roughly. Again, value priced, but not a cheap brand. And I reiterate, full artist quality. This is not a bridge between student quality and artist quality. All right, so let's take a look at them. I'll show you some of the colors that I tested few comments about those colors and we'll even do a few comparisons with some of the other brands that I like to use. Let's take a brief look at the colors that I tried and I'll just go through these and you can go to their website if you want to check out the pigment makeup. But uh, This is the tubes. Sepia, Perylene Violet, Payne's Gray, Red Ochre, Manganese Violet, Quinacridone Red, Scarlet Red, Chromium Orange, Indian Yellow, Lemon Yellow, Transparent Yellow, Golden Green, Thalo Green, Cobalt Turquoise, Helios Cerulean, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue, and Denthrone Blue. And in the pan set, and this was an actual pre-made, pre-packaged set, Golden Green, Cinnabar Green Pale, Hooker's Green, Zinc Green, Cobalt Turquoise, Paris Blue, Cobalt Blue, Poland Blue, Payne's Gray, Ivory Black, Sepia, Raw Umber, Stilled Grain Brown, Mineral Violet, Geranium Lake, Cadmium Red Deep, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Orange, Flesh, Raw Sienna, Gamboge, Lemon Yellow, Venetian Yellow, Titanium White. And again, just head to their website to check out the more specific pigment information. This is from the tube range, and of the tube range, which is 70 colors, uh, I tested 18 of them. Uh, these were provided. Uh, I went and bought these because the pans are quite a bit different from the tubes. Uh, they're still vibrant. They still wet pretty easily. Uh, there's a little less honey in them. You can kind of see a, a dull matte sheen to these. When they re-wet, they're a little bit chalky they don't dry chalky or opaque but um they just they seem you know a little bit chalky they actually kind of remind me a little bit of schminka in the way the kind of the creamy way that they re-wet uh, but they do have honey in them just not as much 
But these, you can see the difference. I mean, these just poured out the most beautiful half pans you can imagine. These are the tubes. This is their newer range that was just introduced this year. And these, I guess I would call, they're all artist quality, but I guess these would be a little more serious sort of studio paints. Although they set up really firm. Uh, compared to M. Graham, which sets up a little bit tacky. You know, when you touch it, it's, it's a little sticky. These don't. They re-wet really I think just about as quickly as M. Graham does. By the way, these are Renaissance pans that uh, April also sells on her site. They're a fairly uh, mid-quality kind of tin. They're not like the Medine tins that you'll get on uh, Amazon, but their only unique feature I guess compared to that is these snap into each other. So if you want to combine palettes you can do that. So anyway, back to the two ranges. Now these should be considered two different ranges because they are quite different. So for example, here's sepia. This is the uh, pan here, and this is the tube here. They made this tube hue uh, out of four pigments, and on the pan side they made it out of two. And you can see there's a little bit difference in the hue. There's another sort of unique oddity um, in the tube. They had what they called a helio cerulean, which was actually just phthalo blue green shade. And in the pan, they had a cyan, which was also phthalo blue green shade. There's, here's another, just kind of an interesting oddity. None of these bothered me or presented particular disadvantages. They were just things to keep aware of. And another good way to uh, illustrate the fact that you can't always depend on paint names. So cobalt blue in the pan was a PB28, but cobalt blue deep in the tube was PB36, which is actually the hue they make uh, cerulean from, true cerulean. Just interesting things to note. But by and large, in the pan, there were more multiple pigment colors than there were in the tubes. For example, gamboge was anything but a true gamboge. It was uh, made out of three pigments, and it really didn't look like what I thought of as a gamboge, which is closer to an Indian yellow. Um, there were a lot of those kind of pigments in the pans. Again, I don't think that's necessarily a drawback. As long as you're aware of it, I don't think it's particularly a bad thing. I am because of the formulation and the, and the higher percentage of single pigment paints leaning toward the tubes. That will probably be my main focus in adding more colors and... Uh, using this paint in the future. Pans perfectly fine for plein air, sketching, whatnot. Here's another example. Payne's Gray is different in the pan range from the tube range. Here's the tube. This is made out of uh, four pigments. And it has a, a more of a blue hue to it. The Payne's Gray from the pan range made out of two pigments. Uh, actually, this is more common that I, I have seen uh, for Payne's Gray, but a little bit greener mix. So both perfectly fine Payne's Gray. Just kind of depends on where your preferences lie. But again, keeping aware that the tubes and the pans are different ranges. In the pan range, they seem to go with more sort of unique names for the color. Poland Blue, which is actually just ultramarine blue. Uh, but in the tube range, they called it ultramarine blue. I did seem to get a little more granulation out of this. I don't know if that's just the way I applied the paint or what. This was a smoother ultramarine blue, but both pretty nice blues. Of the colors I tested, I would say the only color I was disappointed in was the perylene violet. It came out looking more like neutral tint. Here is a true, what I would call a perylene violet. This is Daniel Smith. But take a look at M. Graham's uh, neutral tint, which has a little bit of a violet cast to it. The, their perylene violet reminded me of that very much, although it's a little warmer. That was really the only color that kind of busted my expectations and didn't seem to fit. All right, so let's compare a few pigments just for the heck of it. I've got uh, four, five, six, seven. I got seven colors here. None of them really came out better or worse, but there are just slight differences. And just to kind of give you a better scope on 
the quality of the Renaissance paint. First off, we've got uh, chromium orange here, or azo orange here, both PO62. Had, uh, in all cases, Imgram was just marginally uh, more intense, not tremendously, but that tends to be the case with just about any com any paint you compare Imgram to. I mean, it just it just is, but not much. Uh, not by much. The margin was very slight. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this. One of my favorite colors. Uh, this is Mimgram's Nickel Azo Yellow PY150. And in the Renaissance brand, it's called Transparent Yellow. Just a great color. I love this color. Um, you can see a little more depth in the mass tone. A little more pigment load. One of the things I like about this color so much is how it's almost earthy in its deeper, heavier uh, mass tone, but it tints out to this uh, just beautiful yellow. Really, in Renaissance, it was pretty much the same. Again, marginal difference in pigment load. This one is comparing pigments, but um, if you know anything about PR101, it can be used in a wide variety of colors uh, that are earthy. Uh, this is Renaissance Red Ochre, which is a beautiful color. It's a, a very red brown. Um, this is one of my favorite M. Graham colors. Again, transparent red iron oxide. Just notable as to how they compare. Again, PR101 can take on many different forms. Another interesting comparison. This is uh, what Renaissance calls quinacridone red. It's actually more of a quinacridone rose, both PV19. This is M grams over here. Um, didn't see any difference in pigment load or intensity on these. Renaissance quinacridone red was actually a little cooler than the, the M gram. Let's compare green. Not much difference here at all. I uh, ended up with a backwash on there, but uh, um, so I didn't get the tint out very well. But this is just Thalo Green Blue Shade PG7, very comparable. Anthroquinone Blue for M Gram and Endanthrone Blue for Renaissance PB60. M Grams is a little warmer. Both had very heavy pigment loads, both very intense. Um, again, I give M Gram an edge, just a marginal edge on that one for intensity. Now this is not a single pigment comparison, it is more of a hue comparison. Payne's Gray, which I use a lot. Um, M Grams has a more of a standard sort of a two pigment makeup and it's not uncommon that uh, Payne's Gray will vary in how they make it, but this I thought this was interesting. It's four different pigments. Both of them use PB29, uh, both of them use PBK9, but this adds a PBK11 and a PB15-3. And you can kind of see that little bit of extra green. Both, I think, perfectly acceptable Payne's Grays, just a matter of preference. So that gives you some idea um, how they compare to what I would consider my choice for top quality watercolor paint. Very happy with these so far. Now what I'm going to be doing in the future is um, probably at least a month's worth of painting with these colors before I switch to any other color. Uh, I'm just gonna do several paintings where I just use them and see what I think. I've already done a couple of quick little uh, spontaneous paintings. I posted these on Instagram and Facebook, but if you're not following me there, you haven't seen them. This was really all the blues on the tube palette, all of them, including uh, one green. Paint did everything I wanted it to. It's just It was just lovely to work with. And then there was this one. This is some of the reds, uh, purple, uh, right off the top of my head, I can't even remember what it all was. There was some paint gray in here, that, that funky perylene violet, which actually when you mix it with some of the reds, like the red ochre, uh, just made for some really great tones. So another um, quick little spontaneous painting. I probably, one of the things I'll do uh, with these paints is do another larger spontaneous painting and we'll just get it involved we'll just get this paint involved in two or three other painting projects besides so look forward to those all the information of where you can get these paints are down below all of the renaissance paint pigment information will be linked below and i also want to give a shout out to april palmer down under. She is the Australian 
distributor for Renaissance. And I told her I'd give her a shout out. We kind of got introduced on Instagram. And I know I have many Australian viewers. And getting these paints from the U.S. would probably be a problem. So that's your answer. This is a great option for you guys. This is a great option, hopefully a great option for many of you in Europe. Um, I've already heard from one viewer who is in Ukraine who loves these paints and uses these paints. So uh, it's just great to be able to present you with options that are quality and are not super expensive. And I have no idea how these price out in, in different countries, but I hope it's an option that you can check out and see if it's something you can get. If it is, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Go through this review with me. Thank you patrons so, so much for your support and helping me bring this content to everyone. And we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.